Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So today we're going to look at, and yes, I'm back in my hand tool room, got all the stuff again, which is great. We finished making that big summer garden chair project. Got to use it the last two weeks. Quite nice to sit outside and enjoy the sunshine and get a tan. Not much. Okay. So today we're going to look at, and this is a two-part one, we're going to do mortises. Next week, we're going to show you how you can lay out and cut your tenon. Fundamental part of, if you like, making furniture. Quite interesting. There are ways you can cheat these days, and I've just got myself in trouble. That word cheat. Biscuit jointer. No, I don't know. It's not quite as strong. Domino? Oh, that's really cheating, isn't it? Oh, come on. So maybe you should go back to those basics. When I went to college and we had to do anything, we had to learn those basic things before we could actually dash off and maybe cheat. So we're going to go over some of those basics, how you can mark your mortise out, let it all out, cut it. We're going to do maybe two. We'll see how we get on. Takes a little bit of time. We've got Ben operating certain things in here, stuff doing the questions as well. So if you've got any questions today on anything maybe we've done lately or whatever, we'll try and answer it. We're going to do one of those from yesterday. Clip, I hope you're watching. So you asked, Ben, we can go to camera free. We have on here, this is the Veritas chamfer fit all right so this fits in the block plane so this was cliff question yesterday it is designed in reality to fit the veritas plane wants to know will it fit our rider one um as i take this apart i'm going to watch it for you now because this thing needs to screw in it's not the same thread so it's not going to hold in there for you the other thing i found that was slightly different is the depth of the recess plate on the front of the plane so it sinks in too deep it also wobbles a little bit side to side so sadly no you can't all right and i'm sorry it's taken us a couple of days to get that answered for you but hopefully if you're there if you're watching you understand so now i've got to try and get this back together that's out the way now all right i'm just going to put this back together put it back in the box Likewise, for your question, Cliff, if you're, you know, with that, it will only fit that style, which I think is the basic style of Veritas block plane. It won't fit the DX range or the smaller one. It will only fit that style where the mouth comes out the front. They do a standard and low angle. If you have problems, send me an email. We'll look at it for you, okay? All right, get rid of those. That's that done. Good. All right, so we're going to do our mortise. As we've already kind of said, we're going to cut square holes. This is therapeutic. I said, really? And I know when I first start looking at doing this, and you know, I've done this as a group thing as a lesson, kind of off put, oh, God, eight mortises now, okay, take forever. No, they don't. It's not that bad. Once you get into it and you get yourself set up, and we're going to go over some of the pitfalls and problems you can have and simple ways of getting over it. If it was making something, and we've got a little table in behind us, we'll have a look at a little bit in a second. I was going to do something like a table, and the reason I've done this now, it's one of those problems I know we've had with some of the students over the years. Label stuff. Understand where things are going to go, because there's nothing worse when you're getting towards the end of making this project, and then suddenly go, does that go there or that leg? Which one's it going? And it's really embarrassing when you get to that gluing up stage that you don't know where things go. So label things clearly. Now, to make it clear on here for you guys, I've had to use marker pen. It's a little bit heavy, but it means you can see it. If I do it just in pencil, it's not as apparent. So on the end of the legs, so we have the four, I've done some straight lines. And if you start to look at those lines, you've got one there, did one there, one round, one there. You can't interchange them. So if I turn this one over, it goes there. The line doesn't line up. So I've made sure they're set in different places. So it's not there, got to there. The other thing I do is number each mortise and each tenon. So next week we'll cut the tenon to fit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's our sound check done as well. So Ben's liking that. Okay, so we don't have a sound check. Fantastic. So each of those numbers is really useful, all right? It helps you number your tenon and your mortise. And it gets over that aspect of, goes where? There's nothing more frustrating. So you can see where I've done that. I've done that on the top of the leg, where we're going to cut maybe, you know, the mortise or bed can be on the top. So we've got that there. We will lose some of those marks maybe going through when we cut them. I might have to put the numbers back in. 
quite important to do. All right, get that numbered and laid out nicely. You can play around with your timber grain orientation, everything like that before you start to make sure you get things where you want. Then number it up. Really easy to do and really sensible to do. And yes, I've been there with certain people going, so where does that actually go? Well, it could be here or there. Oh, great. So we want one for a minute. Let's just slide these back out of the way. What we want to do on here, going to make, in reality, corner leg for a table. So we've got one and two. We've got to have two mortises. So we're going to have one there. I'm just going to turn my body around. One down there. Just as a quick guide. You won't see that too much probably on the camera, but just gives me a quick guide of where we are. Want to lay these out. First thing I can do, and one of the biggest problems when you cut a mortise, and I'm sorry, Ben, I'm dancing about again now, the bottom bit, if you're not careful with your chisel, and I've got to try and find my chisel, a chisel, you tend to roll it back a little bit here when you're cutting out, and you soften this back corner. Then when you get your rail in, you get a hole. It shows really frustrating. And I know we're doing this with great things. It kind of, how can we get over that issue? So, that there. I want, quite easy, something like a couple of steel rulers can be good. We want something as a guide as our rail size. A piece of whip for our rail, our leg. I'm going to stand the leg on the two rulers, nice and carefully like that. I'm going to put the rail in front, up to there. Sharp pencil, draw a line. So I've deliberately now raised the leg up by the thickness of the ruler. That gives me a little bit of a safety net. So I know I can go down to that line. Let's go there, move things out of the way. Need some tools a minute now. So trying to think of where we got things. Let's bring the things over a minute. Oh, um, no. We could use it, but let's go with that one. Well, we're here. We're going to possibly one of those. Have one of those out. Put that back. Trying to think of what we want. I didn't want everything on the bench, so when we started, adds clutter. Slightly sharper pencil. Glasses. So in here now, I've got a line. If I was going to mark out all of these, we could do them. I'd be tempted to make up something, keep them that way around, as a stop to go on the bench. Most of you have got something with a bench where maybe you've got your bench holes and dog holes. Maybe you use them, maybe you don't. Giving you ideas now where you could use them. I could actually put all of these in if we wanted. And I'm looking at the locations they're coming into play, making sure it's all on one edge that we need. Slightly smaller square than I'm going to want. But I can actually push them all up, get them level, using the side dogs here, help support it. If you've got a path system, again, really good to use. This way, I've got everything level on the top, up against that board. I can draw a line all the way across. A little bit out there, so when you turn that around. I'm going to put that one. I can go back up on there, got it. Just going to lose three of those. Stuff, yes, I know, I'm on my way. Just going to flip this over. So we have our line. I want to turn it through 90 degrees now. We'll test make this, which is a saddle, a square saddle, so I can sit it and line up my line on the face that I'm looking at here and draw around that corner nice and accurately. So let's just give Ben a, a quick flash up on here. So we get that nicely around the edge, just those two sides. Don't go drawing it on all four because it's going to get confusing where things are. All right. Um, the idea with doing this video was to break it down into nice, simple stages for you. Steph, what have you got? So firstly, I just wanted to let you know that Cliff is watching. He is, Cliff is watching. Yep. So he said, thank you very much for your answers and your help. Okay. And also, Woodwork Learner uh, is admiring your tool holder. Would you be able to show it again? 
No. <laughs> it's mine. Um, right, Cliff, no, not a problem. I'm sorry. I meant to answer it when I came back from a break. Um, when we moved into here and we did the rooms, we wanted something where we can hang everything up. So we have chisel box on the front. It has knife, square, linear, another little Veritas. Uh, uh, turn it around. We've got things for our marking gauges, more dovetail squares and things. So you'll find lots of the stuff in here. And obviously we can move it around. French cleat system up on the wall. A one I really like, which you're going to have one in a minute. Chisel one. Chisel box. Okay. Uh, the idea that with these is obviously I can bring them over to the bench, take out what I want, hang them back on the wall when we don't need it. So different things there. Favourite ones, actually, which you don't see too much of in here. Where am I? Down here. Big plain boxes. We've got three of these. And they're different styles. Really like those. Um, it was a bit annoying that we couldn't do Maker's Central, which actually was going to be a week's time. We were going to take lots of that up there so you could all have a look. So next year, we will be there. Okay? All this stuff, hopefully. All right? So hopefully that answers that. Good? Fantastic. Right. Back to our leg. So we've got... Our stop line is a pencil line going round. Next thing we want, chisel box. So, uh, what do I want? Let's have a look. We're going to want more to chisel. Get with that just for a minute. I'm not going to need anything else for a sec. I will want stuff, but really at this stage, it's more to chisel. You need something as a mortise gauge. I've got different ones here. What I would class as traditional one. All right, wooden ones. We all, you know, you might have those. So this has. And a uh, single pin on the back. Got to go careful with that. This occasion, you go pushing your thumb on there, but you can't see it as well. Two pins on the top. We have screw thread adjuster. Move it up and down. That moves this side only, the top side, which is what we're going to use for the mortise. The other side is a cutting or marking gauge. In this case, it's a marking gauge. Veritesto, their mortise gauge has two, which I would class as tungsten carbide type wheels on the top. They're quite sharp. They have set in alternate directions. So one is flush on the top, one's the other way. You have top, you can move up and down. If you buy one of these, buy it with the collar. I think we do it as a kit part. Advisable to buy it with the collar because you can lock off your chisel depth, which we can set up, and then move all of it in one go. If you don't have the collar, you've got to move each bar individually, and it becomes frustrating. All right, so the collar is definitely worth having. What am I going to use? I'm just going to go back to the traditional one for a minute. If you want me to see me set up the other, you can do that, but we can do a similar thing. On here, what we got? Our mortise chisel. We need the width of. I've got to look at this now. Nice and fiddly to do. I've got to come in a little bit. I want to get it the width of, and I'm going right to the ends of the pins. These pins, if, and most of you might have this sort of thing, they taper. We want to be right on the cutting tip on the top. And I'm also using the back of the chisel. Yeah, ben will really see that. So I'm using the flat edge of the chisel, not the top edge. Okay, so I've set, and I'll explain that for you in a second, why I'm doing it that way. All right. But whilst I've got hold of this, I'm going to do that. Then we want an offset position in off the face edge of our piece of wood. One of the things that I revise when I started working for a guy before I came here many years ago, we made furniture, don't try and line things up. Don't get it flush. Set things back. It makes things easier. So I'm also going to use this. So this is, I think, 12 mil Corian. Oh, not quite, just down to there. A bit too loose on my screw thread. That'll work. Just check it didn't move. It did jump back a tiny little bit. And this is where your time can be well spent setting things up, get them right. That's good. So we got that. Bottom pin down here, lined up off the face. That's my inset step, which will make sense a bit more in a second. Next thing I said about is make sure you work off the back edge, the flat of where your chisel is on your pins. Why? It's quite amazing. I never realised this until I started looking into mortise chisels and certain things. This isn't square in section. Some are. Some aren't. I've even spent a bit of time squaring up a Japanese one, which I was pretty sure it wasn't made right. No, they're deliberately made out of square. This tapers towards the top. 
I think this is 6.93 at the top. I measured it before we came on. It is 7.97 on the bottom, so basically 8 mil. So there's about a millimetre of tape after this. That stops it binding when you're using it and doing the cut. So it's deliberately meant to be out of square slightly. It'll be square as in flat face to the top, but the sides taper either side. So now you know why it's out of square. You can't go send it back and say it's not right. So hopefully you understand that. All right? It's one of those weird and wonderful things that I never realized until I started looking into it. Right, glasses back on. Just going to use the vice. Can't use the vice for everything this, but extra pair of hands is good. We want our mortise there and there. We have our stop line, which you probably can't see too well. But I wonder if I can get it. It's going to be a bit difficult. When do you get, what do you get on three there now? Too low. Okay, I'm going to turn them right around them. All right. Mortise there, that's better. Good. Check this is done up. First thing I would do, apart from the light, or I create a bit of shadow, use the two pins to create a dot down near where our pencil line is, so they're there. Make sure things are tight. From those dots, I can either go up or down. So in my case, I'm going to start on those. I'm going to pull it up. And this is the reason I put it in the vise. It makes it so much easier to hold. All right, trying to be nice and heavy so you guys can see what we're doing. One there, one there. One side done, turn it round. Back in the vise. This face, now look where my pencil line is that we've got as our guide. We can do the same again. Down to the bottom. The reason for coming down to the bottom, if I push this away, if I'm not too forceful, it will drop into that little point. Do it again. Hear it clicking. So it acts as the stop point. So in other words, I don't keep going and destroy everything below it and put two lines in. Just going to do one heavy one coming back up. That gives us our line. Don't like using pencil too much over the top of it, but trying to show you what we're doing. Next thing, go back to a square. We want something as a set down from the top. We're going to have a haunch. I'm going to make this really simple and minimalistic, if you like. Square, pencil on the top, line. I can come around that side without moving it. And it's going to do that. All right, good. So I'm trying to get the square at the top. So I'm actually I'm 25 mil or an inch down off the top for this. That was nice and simple, wasn't it? I'm going to put those away now. Right, that. that. We have, and I'm hoping you can probably, I think you've probably seen, we've got this bit down through here, down to the line. We're going to stop, start, stop point. Got to cut those out. So we've done our marking up. Now, if I was doing that for, obviously, something like a table, I would do all of them. Especially when you've got everything set. Even more important, if you're working with a group of students in a room. Can't you, can't you spoil your mortars, guys, please? And they go off of it. And then mess it up. So try and make sure or you drop it on the floor. That sort of scenario. So try and mark them all at the same time. You get your lines exactly the same. Real simple things. Next thing. Can't hold this in the vice to do this. We're going to use mortar shadow. We're going to move it. We're going to bounce up and down the vice. Likewise, not in the middle of your bench. And this is quite a rigid bench. Your best place you can do this is over where the leg is. So first thing I'm going to do, close the vice. The leg on the bench that we're using here is actually in line with the dog holes here. So I've got to come right up to there. It's a little bit of annoying from my point of view. I looked and played around this morning. The other end has got different vice on. Also made it difficult to see what we're doing with the camera. I wanted to take the vice off, but I've got to undo another bolt in behind. Uh, all right, we'll level that. So need to clamp it down. Get onto there so I can get a G clamp. One in there. Next thing you know, I'm bent down. I'm doing the clamp up from underneath. The handle's lower. Why? You don't headbutt it. Nothing worse than headbutting when you start doing this. I'm going to put a clamp on there just to hold this to stop it moving about. Hoping that's not going to get in the way. A little bit of corian that we used as a markup block. It's going to help me. It's going to go on there. Now, depending on how well we get on this, we'll determine 
how many we might cut as in the one or the two we might get through two i can put clamp on so we've got quick action clamp on there now this is something never really used to do and it got me thinking a while back of can i make it easier and more accurate better Put the clamps in the right order that will work that'll hold it now the reason for the clamp stop it sliding around the bench the reason for having it over the leg you're using all the force down to the floor to support it you're not getting any bounce off the bench we've got our marks our lines chisel we want mortise chisel let's go back round we got that box got a quick look and see which one do i think looks better sharper which one did I have a go at earlier, that one? Now we've got an eight mil mortise chisel for this. About a third is a guide for your tannin. If we go with a normal chisel, can you see the width difference, thickness? So this is a lot thicker up here. Oh, one, two, maybe three times the thickness. That weighs our cutting face. So why do we need a mortise chisel? It's got more structural strength. Your little bevel edge chisel, yeah, we might get away with it on smaller mortises when they're not as deep, but something like a table leg, you need that structural strength. So we'll put our six mil chisel away for a minute. We will want it. We've got our mortise chisel. We then need a beater. Um, ben and Steph are now looking more worried because they suddenly realized I'm going to make some noise. All right, so... Let's see we go on. First thing, I want a start line, which is right down the bottom where I've got that pencil line, just inside it, I'm bringing it up. I want to create a groove. I can use my Corian block to help support it. So in other words, I haven't got any problems of concentrating on what's happening here. I've just got to worry about other way. So just inside my line, fingertips squaring things up, create a tap. The back of the chisel at the moment is facing that line. I want to come up to the other end. I turn the chisel around, line it up with my line. Quite a tap. Now I'm going to come inside a bit. This is going to be a bit slow for a minute, but we will say again fingertips supporting. Now this is breaking fibers, gonna come back. And now I'm just working back in between those cuts we've done. I have, and we're gonna check the chisel back up in a second. I get the chisel, now I'm actually angled there. The bevel edge of the chisel is here, flat is on the back, so I'm driving in a little bit. I'm going to turn it over. Come the opposite way now. So I've angled down, so my bevel is on the top. I've angled down to there. I'm going to start going back through. So my Corian block, it doesn't have to be Corian. Corian's a hard plastic. You could make them out of a hardwood. Set them up for the width you want to be set in. You've got to think about your shoulders on either side start to work back through getting somewhere a little bit of hand work now just to start chipping those out got to change direction in a minute so I need to come from the other end I think you can see what we're doing now breaking these fibers out okay I'm going to turn the chisel around now I don't want to block the camera so it's going to look a bit Bit odd with my bevel. I'd really want to stand far end, but I think we'll be all right. Ooh, gonna have to go around to there just a second. So you can see the left hand pinching the chisel, pulling it back up to that support block.
just going to break the fibres off a bit. So just going to use the chisel, drag it back, take off that top layer. Now we've gone in a little bit, not much, not loads yet. We are going to cheat. So drill bit and collar stop it. Now I've severed the fibres, I've got a location of where I can sit this in nicely. I can also use my support bolt. Got my drill. On here, most important bit for this, collar stop. So the collar, I've already fixed on here. I can check my depth coming into the end. That looks good. Don't want to be coming all the way through on this. So I've tightened up that little purpley pink collar on the top here. That'll do that. Not going to come right up to my line. Help keep the drill bit square. Work that through. Clear that out a little bit. My finger, that's better. <sighs> All right, good. That's just taken out a lot of the bolt. So we can get back into the chisel now, make life easier and quicker. A bit too much, need to go back in between so I can feel along where the holes are. Just severing those fibres a bit better. The risk if you do this sort of thing as we sever with normal chisel, you'll snap it. I'm going to change mallet. It's only a bit lighter, or it looks lighter, not as bulky size wise. So this is brass headed. The Ryder Morsia Chisel, the 8mm Hornbeam Handle, so it's hard wearing, got stainless steel ring on the top, so this shouldn't affect this. Gently working along. Going to change direction, come back down the other way in a second. Good there. So Ben, you'll need to go back to camera two, I think. Just learning up a bit on the end. Feeding back along the line. Don't go in too steep. So we're probably entering at about a 45 degree angle. Sharp and wise for mortise shuttle. Actually got a 35 degree bevel on it. Why something steeper? Normally everything I've got in here is probably 30. 35 will add a bit more strength to what we're doing. Now I've just gone, got that little six mil chisel. We're going to use it as um, a fiber breaker and dragger. Just to break those bits off, pull them out. Occasionally I'll probably take this off the bench, turn it over, tap it on my boot, drop the fibers on the floor. A little bit in the end to get square things up, get things square on here now. So, quite important just to do nice and upright where things are. If you're unsure, you could draw a line up on your support block. I'm going to come back just inside my pencil line, get things square. That's good. I'm going to come up to the other end. Again, coming to that line. Break those fibres out again. A little bit in there. So I want to go back into here. Ben's going to go camera two for me so you don't see my back. That'll be good. Chisel at the moment is upside down. Picking places where I know there's a few little lumps. So I want to do that bit there. Don't go hitting it down too hard and sort of forcing it. You're going to struggle to get this back out. Okay. Let's have another go then. Clear out session. A little bit in 
there. So six notches are working nicely. Oh, why don't we just do that? I wonder what have we got. Small batches that we can get just working down the edge level. So I think you're probably on that's good. Boom, well done. I'm afraid. Sorry, mate. I should have said down through there. Reading it on that chisel, if I go something longer, gotta support it more. So it's difficult to control. So we go nice and short, get into the easier to support it. Right, so I think we're doing all right time wise. Just gonna move things about. Because if we're doing a table leg, gonna work the two. So we move our clamps, chisel out the way. Amp up on here, turn it over, clear that out, clamp back on. We can work these two together then, helps clear out the bottom. That's a bit on first. Ooh, might need to come in just a little bit there. I'm going to come up too much, that'd be enough, I hope, because I need to get this one in under here. It will go in there. Trying to make things nice and secure on the bench. Again, we're working over where that leg is to add support, stop the bounce. Make sure everything's nice and fixed, that's not moving. We start again then. Now this time you might see more on camera too there, bed, so you can have a look. Just coming up from my line, setting it up, setting it square, pulling it back against the support block clamped on. Create a start stop point. Same at the other end. Again, using fingertips, pinning back, so pulling everything back against that support block. Why change mallet? This one's heavier. It might look a bit smaller, but just got that little bit more weight to it. First line done. Turn. So I said, really therapeutic, apart from hot sunny day, polyester shirts, so, I mean, I don't know. So, getting a bit of movement down the bench, so, tighten things up. Gently working through. Like I said, don't go trying to take too, too much. Let's have a look with. Break shit a little bit. Pull that back out. See what's going on. Right, want something a little bit longer just to clean up these fibers on the edge. Come back to slightly longer chisel here just to give me that little bit of clearance, a bit more push, get my handle higher. And this is now breaking off some of the fibres lower down in between those drill holes. Got a lump there I want to get. And this is where you start to, okay, where do we need to look at what we're trying to get. Let's have a look with the drill again then. Probably drop in the holes I've already got. So 
Uh, ben, are you on camera too? Can you tell me if you can see in there? Have we got hole yet? Can we get daylight? No, okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to around the other side now. I'm going to work back from there, join the two together. We're doing all right. Only 37 minutes so far. Ooh. Tap it out. It's what whip boots are made for. That side. Clamp down. Bring it back up. Just checking where I am on the bench. My support block back on. Need to drag it forward just a bit. That's good. Okay, that one on there. That one in underneath. Just stir up, lazy way. Back in with our drill. Because now what we're trying to do is join up the corner. This is taking some of the waste out that's been pushed down. That's good. Standard chisel. Cleaning up against the board. Just need something a bit more push I can get using the left hand. Really force it up against that board that's adding as the support bar. Bit in the corner there. And then the other face. Got to be a bit careful with this one because I don't want to open things up too much. So I'm not coming all the way back up to the top. Resting on what we've already created with the mortise chisel. Give us a line. Six mil one. Going to use right on the end there. Right up in the corner. And, uh, just square back up. Mortar shuttle. Get that. Checking things are right back in the corner there. I think I've got a bit of a taper coming towards the joint. So we'll get that. Clean those up. Right on the way stuff. Give us a on the way. Just going to clean this one out. Okay. Brush it off. Weird and wonderful thing to do at this stage. We'll have another look in a minute. Right, Steph, what have you got? Uh, so, David has asked, is the drill bit, is it a Brad Point drill bit? It is. It makes it easier, and it also comes out with a flat bottom. So, those guys got different names. You have a lip and spur, Brad Point, similar sort of things. It tends to be more flat bottom than what I would class as the standard meta drill that comes up to a point of, I think, 60 degrees off the top of my head. So, it helps produce that. also makes it easier to locate it in this groove and less likely to wander out. So, Brad Point Draw is really good for that. That's, I think, in there, I think it's a 7 mil drill. I've got an 8 mil chisel. So, it's slightly under the width of your mortise. The chisel is going to clean that up. You don't want it, obviously, being the same size. If you wander up your hole, you're going to make it wider. Then, just tap the rubbish out a minute. The reason for cleaning the bench. There's nothing worse than putting this back down on top of and clamping it on top of those shavings you just left and then denting it. Make lots of little marks in the wood where you clamp it on. So if we clean up a little bit as you go, put it on the floor, you can sweep up later. That one back in. Got to get clamped up on here, not that one. So I'll put that one up in there for a second. Going to come down a bit. This one's a bit trickier for me to clamp in. I reckon I'm creeping down the bench a bit. Let's come up there. Again, we're working up over where the leg of the bench is so important to get over. And I know I'm repeating it. It just means you won't bounce. 
get a more positive cut. It will also deaden the noise down a bit. So, clamp back in. I'm going to start with flat chisel. Just going to sever those fibres coming down through. Got a lump there. there. Let's just see there. So, you can see the idea with the collar stop on this. It's going to stop us going all the way through the other side. We haven't got a lot to clear out here. Got a lump there is what I'd like to get. I wonder. Use the brad chip, the point. I'm slow with the stir and just get into there. That's good. You can see I can also tilt it back a little bit. Now, what we've got now, almost little ridges in between. So we go back in, mortise chisel. I've got to square at this end. Bit of a lump in there. Checking things look square. So I'm sighting up through. The plastic, if you like the bit of coral in the support bar. Sounds good there. This end we've got our line again, just looking at how things are. There. Big chisel nail. And down. Smaller one, less aggressive. Take less out. That's a lump. Inside. I think. Better. Lump in the corner there. Now, look, Ben is on there. Hang on, sorry, yeah, there, good. Stay where you were, Ben. Go back and we're using this support. So, the whole idea of this support bar helps keep the chisel parallel so you're not wandering off when you're cutting the groove, but also we've got something to pare down. Nice and accurate. Right, so it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could be a piece of plywood. I've worked out the offset. I want to come back. That's really important. And then clamp it on. Then look after it. And then you probably end up designing your furniture or whatever you're making around that box. Probably not such a good idea, but it'll work. Turn there. Oh, and I just... Put them back out of the way for a second. Clamps have got to come back up. We should need to turn it over, hopefully, last time. Clean it out. Again, by doing this on your boot, you're tapping it out floor level more than up on the bench. We want that. Get rid of it. Clamp down. Clamp down on there. In, I can come in from there as well. A tiny bit of corner now. So, 20 mil chisel down to the bottom. I twist it. Right down through those fibres, it will split nice and easily. Six mil, just to sever the ends. Not using it as with the mallet. Turn round, get back into there. Check how it goes from the other side. Now I'm looking down, which you can't see from where you are, looking down, I'll hold it up in a minute. How the chisel moves, so I'm working on the back groove coming along. So, Ben's done that there. You can see that's how the chisel goes in. I can look down from above to check how things are in the corners. 
Is there anything I don't like there? I've got a little bit inside face. I can see a lump. Good. Hopefully. Turn that round. Go on, stuff. What have you got? Um, I've got a question from David. He's asked, what was the name of the plastic that you were using for the guide? Okay, so David, it's not that critical what you use. Um, this is Corian. It's traditionally used for hospital worktops and whatever. It's meant to be a bacterial you know, property. You don't got first one type worktop covering. Um, the only reason I use it, it's hard wearing. It doesn't dent too easy. We had quite a lot of it ages ago where I bonded two bits together. It worked fantastically because it was easy just to glue together. Some super glue gave me a plate. You could use plywood. Doesn't have to be this. I used it because actually when we were doing this, I started teaching this as a course about five years ago. So therefore, I wanted them to last. I didn't want to make a new set every course. So if you're doing one job, the plywood boards will last well off or an offcut of a hardwood work great. Don't go think it's got to be plastic, all right? So, but that's Corian. Okay, so we have got holes. Sorry, Ben. We, we, I've got to go that way. Like, okay. So we've got two. We can we do a magic thing if you like, I think. Um, pencil. Okay. Yeah, you can see things move. That's good. Right. Nice and clean. Again, pencil is a good way of gauging what's happening in the corner. Is there a lump? They also can work nicely. And back to camera too. If you, I'm going to try and keep my fingers out of the way so you don't think I'm cheating. Put your pencil in. Check your vertical. Because if you've left a lump in the corner, it will sit at a funny angle. You'll start to notice it. So that's a quick and easy way of just checking what you've cut out. Looks quite square. You could put a square on it if you like and see where you are. But they look pretty good. We're up to our stop points either end. Now, okay last little bit to do on here traditionally on this this bit on the top when we stopped we did that groove would have a haunch the haunch we're going to cut on the tenon so we've got to cut a little section out always used to cause me problems on trying to make sure they're the same so i started thinking about it especially with doing groups one of the legs now on the legs with this cable shape or you might even have an off cut of what you trim them and trim your legs to size or if you're going to make a table or if you're making trim them to size before you get going with this so you know you're accurate at the top. Let's use that. Now on the table we've got, and we've got one in behind us, Ben, can you just go to probably camera two? I've got a table in here. We've got a tapered leg on this. So it's square at the top, tapers on the inside face. So on here, what I can do with that, I know this is my inside face, where the mortise would be with the next one. I can lay it on the bench. I can clamp it down, but not with that. Just look. It might mark the very end of it, which isn't going to hurt. This is the bottom end. One to way now of marking, cutting the haunches, make them all the same. Figuring out how deep they want to be. I'm going to say nine mil. One there. One there. Put that in underneath there. No measuring, no guessing. Clamp it up. So again, I'm clamping over where the bit of MDF is. Don't think we're going to get too much bounce there. We'll probably be all right. We have got that if I wanted. Will it get in there? Probably not using the vice. No, well, maybe. It's going to be in the way. We'll stick with like that for a second. So we now have that offset of the bit of MDF. We then want something to sever the fibres. So, Hansel, I'm going to kneel out the way for you, hopefully. You have to tell me where I go to, Ben. You might have to go to two. Now, we could line that with our groove down through. All right. I'm sorry if you guys can see the back of my head a little bit. So I can use what we've just done with the chisel. It's a really good guide to help support the saw. I started with the handle high there, 
So the teeth are inserted. I can use my fingertip just to support things. I'm coming down to I touch, just marking that stop bar. A couple of cuts out the middle. We can even do one there. Well, I wondered if we need to mark it, uh, clamp it this end, but we'll get a wag of it. So we've taken the waste out of there quite efficiently. Let's just, we've still got a bit of work to do to it. A bit of a V cut inside here. Whoops. Not level yet. So back onto a box again. To do something that I don't like doing, but let's just put that one on there. I'll use gravity to support it a bit. Now we can cut this out. We've got a couple of options. Easiest one, wood chisel. So, we can come down through there. We could even use, if you really want to now, I've taken most of my waste out. Mortar chisel's the same width. Some of you, if you really want to get in your word about chipping your fibres out, might have small router, small router plane. So I can drop it down to the thump bearer, lock it off, come inside our groove, just clean out the bottom, nice and flat. So you could get away with your chisel, the router will give you a slightly more accurate bottom and nice and flat piece, it will cut and reduce the tearing. Right, okay, quick tidy up. From there to there, right there. That hand plane chisel can go back in there. That's a big one. There. That chisel can go on the side. That can go back up on there. Mullets we're going to put out the way. So I'm just trying to sort out a bit and get things done. I've got the other mortises still to mark. Got to remember now I know what I'm doing tomorrow afternoon. Six to go. Didn't take long though, did it? I mean, we've explained it, we've gone through it all in an hour. So, hoping. A quick look. I've got now. Let's have a quick look on here. We have our nice haunch cut. And again, by using the aspect of the MDF block, you know you're nine mil deep. It will be exactly the same on all four or all eight if you're doing your table. Cut down through. Quick and easy way to do it. Instead of marking up, we say, a marking gauge and marking them out 100%, with that technique of uh, line, then trying to cut down to those can be nicer. Do it with something and raise it up. So that is something kind of to look at. So hopefully, any questions, Steph? Quiet afternoon over there. That's quite nice. Yeah, it's quiet. You've got a actually. question? Oh, um, nice. No, it's just been everybody's learning something okay. new and enjoying the live today. You've been I need very to do this thorough. in the middle of winter, or we're going to have to get air conditioning. I mean, like, okay, quite a race to do this. I know it's going to be difficult. Now, uh, next week, I'm going to do the tenons to fit our hull. The reason I want to split it into two parts is so you can see what's going on. Explain it. Those little tricks, the simple thing of using the ruler to raise the leg up gives you the scope of you damage the corner we can cover it good simple and easy technique and actually two steel rulers most of you've got those blocks to raise that up for your haunches so easy to do and it gets over that problem of making them the same easy to chisel off mortise chisel look at your shape drill bit and collar great definitely the collar better than a bit of masking tape or a pen line believe me nothing worse than going all the way through so your collar stop's really good for that because they act as depth stop, make it repeatable. As we said, lip and spirit or brad point drill definitely makes it easier to present it. All right. Um, boxes on the wall, yeah, they work nice. You know, they hold all the shadows, look after things, keep it nice and safe. Support block, quite easy to do. Doesn't have to be anything specific, as I said. Just need to be a little bit hard. So hardwoods, you've got off cuts, a bit of oak or something. Glue a couple of bits together, fantastic, really easy to do. That's the end of today. Pretty much sure we cover most things. If you've got any questions, you know where we are. You can email us, all right? That the link will come up for there. 
quite a warm one to do at this time of year. Just two mortises in there. Um, I know when we do this with the groups, it used to take us an hour to do the first hole, and they kind of, oh, my God. If you get into it, it doesn't take you long. What is, most people, when they look at this, go, yeah, but it's off putting, isn't it? What? Have a go. You might enjoy it. This is, if you think about it, you went back two, three hundred years. They didn't have that machine that. <laughs> it's a quite nice to do it with a chisel. Nothing too elaborate we've used this afternoon. So, good one to do. If you've enjoyed this, tell your friends, share it. Let them have that info. Maybe they'll, they'll get something out of this. Subscribe to the channel. That could be quite nice. You'll get to see me again. All right. So, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Thank you for watching me for an hour. Thank you, too, for helping. All right, we'll see you soon. Next tomorrow, there's something else. I don't remember what we've got tomorrow. I've got a recorder going out tomorrow, guys. So we will see you then. Bye, then.